Okay, good afternoon. Um, I want to tell you a true story. This is about a young woman. She stepped up to the window when they called her name. He gave her back the doctor's note and waved her away. He said, I don't believe in birth control, so I don't fill those prescriptions. What good is your prescription if the pharmacists don't have to fill it? Why are some police based, trained in Bible-based enforcement? Why are some female prisoners taught to submit to their husbands? Why are TV anchors writing books about some war on Christmas? Why have states passed school leg legislation that's penned by evangelists? All of this is true. How is that free penned by evangelists? Okay, but we're not just talking about a specific religion uh, or a religious person. We're talking about a movement of people that are sitting at the White House table and being part of the decision-making that goes on in this country. And that's why I feel the church and state are trying to manifest their destiny. Where we're going would scare Nazi Germany. This is Armageddon-based foreign policy. So don't tell me that they're not installing a theocracy in this country. I say, I say to look out, we have a president who signed a statement at midnight, not to end the war, but so Terry Schiavo won't die. They swoon, they close their eyes in prayer for one, while thousands die. They swoon about life, but they're dreaming about Armageddon and death. We're talking about lives. I'm actually talking about human lives, not potential lives that are small cells that are living inside my body. I'm talking about human lives that are being very clearly shot at, killed, tortured, by the right-wing government that we had in this country up until January. And those kinds of forces have been turning their eyes, turning a blind eye towards real, clear human beings all around the world, shooting, dropping bombs, torturing, waterboarding, executing, executing, and yet somehow we are supposed to believe that those individuals, we're supposed to believe, okay, you're, you're just trying to just make a lot of noise. So I did, I did hear your point. What the heck are you talking about? No, here's, here's what I, here's what I think. We are talking about something that is done in a third of the female bodies in this country. And yet, we are supposed to feel ashamed and if we have done something on the scale of the worst crimes committed in human history. How am I supposed to look at people who turned a blind eye towards wars, unjust wars, founded on outright lies, including torturing human beings. We're supposed to turn our eyes to that, but we're supposed to be concerned and feel like we are sinners because somebody has said, there's been a problem in my pregnancy and I will die or my life will be ruined if I bring a child into the world, this is not the right time. And they make that decision. That happens to one third of the women in this country. And yet we're supposed to be feeling that that is the big problem in the world right now. We're supposed to feel like this is the crime. But one third of all the women in this group right now, that we're the criminals, that we're the murderers. Where were you during the war? Where were you when all these children are dying, being born in a basement of this country with nothing to eat? Where are 
the so-called pro-lifers when they make laws that say it's okay to execute this man because we think he probably did something wrong. Why is that okay? That absolutely is okay. Have you heard of the Herrera decision? Have you heard of the Herrera decision? Yes or no? Yes or no? I'm not talking to you. The Herrera decision says, under the Clinton administration, the Herrera decision says that in cases where a state has already decided that somebody is guilty, that no matter how much evidence comes forth in the future to prove that person guilty, it doesn't matter, it doesn't overturn a state conviction. And thus, people who are allowing executions to continue, even when there are appeals that say we've got new evidence, those people are supporting murder. That is a crime. That is what is the nature of this country. This country is not a problem of women trying to control our futures by trying to say we need better birth control, we need better relationships between men and women so that people don't feel that they have to get pregnant by accident or in wrong circumstances. We need all of that until we have women's liberation where women have complete, complete control over the kinds of relationships that we have with each other and with men. Until we have that, there will always be a third of women in this country who will require reproductive health services, birth control, and abortion. And this is not just about abortion. The people who are against abortion now are coming to strip us of birth control tomorrow. So let's not make a mistake about where this is coming from. This is not just about them trying to say this little action done again. One third of American women. This is not a big secret. This is not a criminal action. We're talking about a common place part of many, many women's lives. And they're coming for that, not because they care about cells clumped together that can, under ideal circumstances, become a human life. If they were caring about that, they would be against the war, they would be against capital punishment, they would be taking care of children in the schools, they would be supporting the quality of human life. Exactly.